We just heard from four of the biggest stocks in the markets, all reporting during a volatile week on Wall Street. Stocks posting a gain today following three days of selling on virus fear. So did tonight's earnings change the market mood? Let's bring in Tony Dwyer, chief market strategist at Canaccord Genuity. Tony, great to see you. Great to see you, Mel. What do you think? What do you, what do you think the markets will do in response to these earnings? You know what I love? It already responded. The market was up over a percent during the trading hours. Then in the after hours, it, it was only up a little bit. So what I really love about the, the four big ones that reported is there's differentiation among them. And it's not just one correlated market. In other words, certain companies are reacting to how they went into it. And then they're reacting to the numbers coming out of it. So I, I like the fact that it's that they're kind of acting differently. I, that, that's a good sign. So you think it's, I mean, as opposed to if they all sort of just traded as a monolith, then that would make you more pessimistic right. about what, what happens with the markets? A lot of times the viewers, um, it, we don't explain well enough what correlations mean. When every stock is acting the exact same way, that typically happens in, in a crash or some kind of really huge market swoon. So correlations, which means how each individual stock trades against the market itself, when those correlations are very high, it goes from a, a scale of zero to 100. It was at a, a near record high during the March uh, and it, that crash in March. So now correlations have come down a lot. So not every stock is trading the same way, mm. which means that analysts are doing what Gene has done a great job of so far on the show. And that is suggesting which is positive and negative, not just fundamentally, but how the stocks react. And I think it's important, just like I have to separate the market from the economy, sometimes the macroeconomic backdrop. I think analysts have to do the same thing on some of these names. Yeah, I know you're a longer term uh, sort of forecaster, Tony. But, you know, in terms of the short term, we've got the election coming up in just days. And at the same time, we've just gotten news that Walmart is removing guns and ammunition from sales floors to prevent theft and looting. Uh, customers can still purchase these items, but the change is a precaution given what it calls recent civil unrest. We haven't even gotten to the election, the potential for civil unrest right. as it relates to a, an election outcome. Um, what, do you, what do you foresee for the markets going into the next week? So if it's gotten down to the level where Walmart's making decisions like that, you think a hedge fund manager or a mutual fund manager may have de-risked their portfolio a week at a time? <laughs> so I, I think the idea that we're going into this, and, and again, I think we come on TV and we make like we have any idea what the near term is going to act. We have a pandemic like we've never, we've never seen something like this in modern times, and we're still kind of in the thick of it with the second wave. We still have the election in front of us, and, and Mel, as you said, we have no idea if it'll be contested and if there'll be social unrest. We have geopolitical um, tension with China. We've got Brexit. We, we, you know, you could go on and on and on, and at some point it gets discounted. So let, let's put it to the numbers, because you know, who cares what my opinion is? Let's look at the numbers. When uh, we found that when more than 90% uh, of S&P 500 components are trading below their 10-day moving average, it signifies a washout. Um, the same is true when the VIX spikes to where it got 40 and the 10-day rate of change spikes to where it, it marks a peak in volatility. Now, when these two events happen, it doesn't typically mark the exact low. So I, I'm not going to try it. I, I've proven on with you and everywhere else. I'm not the greatest trader of all time. What I do know is that it is significant because it does mark at least a temporary bounce where any further weakness is going to be made up. The futures were weak after the four numbers came out, the earnings numbers came out. So at this point, you could open up a little bit weaker. But historically, what you, if on a short-term basis, you want to add into that weakness. Now, Mel, I think a really important point for me to point out is the reason I always stress the macroeconomic backdrop of excess liquidity coupled with a synchronized global recovery, right. you had the opposite of that in the March decline. So we're oversold. So you have one of two options. You're either going to tank like you did in March or you're going to have a stabilization period and you're going to bounce. The reason I think it's a stabilization, stabilization period and a bounce is because we have excess money. We have a Fed that's told us they're going to keep printing money. Sure. D.C. is fighting over how much they can give. So I, I think that's the setup in the background. Tony, great to see you. Thanks. Thank you, Mel. Tony Dwyer, Canaccord Genuity. Uh, Guy, do you buy that stabilization, then bounce scenario that Tony's putting forth? 
he echoed some of the things we talked about last night, Mel. You know, we, last night we started the show on sort of a rosy uh, outlook in terms of we mentioned the VIX traded up to the 40 level, which we had talked about for seemingly weeks. Uh, that was the June high. And we thought, at least I thought, the S&P could trade down to 3210, got down to 3260. So, you know, a lot of things lined up for the market to recover. I didn't know it happened this quickly, but I am sort of in the Tony Dwyer camp. We'll see what happens over the next few days. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.